2025 has been a very interesting year uh, for Zimbabwe. We have, we have put ourselves on the map in terms of connectivity as a country. Um, a year ago, 8th of September, the government announced through Potras that Starlink was available. And that's been a huge game changer for each of, for us as a business, uh, but for each of you as participants in the economy because it has been one of the things that's held us back from being able to conduct business effectively or enable our organizations effectively really for the last 15 or 20 years. Yes, we've had fiber, but fiber has had significant constraints. Constraints in terms of cost, implementation timescales, uh, availability, etc. I'm pleased to advise that Frampol is not attacking the market on its own in terms of Starlink. We're working through a number of partners. Ken, thanks for joining us today. Great to have you here. You're one of them who are really now being able to bring Starlink and connectivity and security around that. Philippe and his team at Fortinet um, giving Sean an opportunity to present his products. And we've also had some partners. Thank you, Rayan, for coming up from South Africa to come and talk about how our ecosystem of products can really enable your operations. And for the next few minutes, I'm really wanting to this, this to be a dialogue. We'll talk, we'll share ideas. And I would like you to start thinking about in the next few minutes, because I'm gonna ask you some questions, of how you think these various products and services will enable your business to, to achieve its objectives. While you ponder that, I'm gonna do a very brief recap. Simon, thanks for your presentation earlier on private and public cloud and how the AI and AI platform can really make us superhuman and give you the competitive edge. Because your organization is not operating in isolation in this market, you have competitors. So here's a question. If your competitor is engaging and using these products and services, where does that leave you? Number two, if the rate of change that we're experiencing now is exponential and not linear, what challenges are you facing in directing your organization in the future? Rate of change is exponential. What help do you need to ensure not only your ability to survive, but to thrive? Frampol has been going for 21 years. I don't think that that's necessarily putting us in a strong position. There are some smaller, possibly more dynamic, possibly younger CEOs of organizations playing in our space, that if they use some of these technologies and we don't, where does that leave us competitively? We presented in the Harare International Conference Center a couple of months ago, and I said, I don't think we need to know the answers. I think we need to know what questions to ask. So you've noticed I've started this morning with a couple of points, but really with challenging questions. And I think if we don't ask some of these questions, I think, I know we're gonna be left behind, number one, at best. Number two, left incredibly vulnerable. Sean touched on that. Number three, irrelevant to our market. If the rate of change is exponential, how are you and your organizations adapting? I spoke to Matt a bit earlier on. Matt's involved in the uh, EFT sector. And we spoke about how latency on Starlink and availability of Starlink and speed on Starlink has changed in just six to seven months. Starlink in January, Caroline, 
Banks would have looked at it and thought, no, 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 no. You know, they're now connecting their ATMs, connecting their points of sales, connecting their branches. But just six months ago, it was a no-no. Too slow, too much latency. But if it's changed in six months, where does that leave Caroline and her team? It leaves her in a position, I would argue, of monthly review. Reviewing her decisions monthly. And my challenge to you is, are you doing the same in your own organizations? Are you partnering with a technology partner in order to get the latest, in order to get an indication of, are we on the right track? Are you reviewing your decisions regularly? You know what? We used to review our technology decisions maybe once a year. We're reviewing them now monthly. And those are serious decisions. Those are $50,000 a month expenditure decisions. Because we know that if the rate of change is logarithmic, exponential, we'll get caught irrelevant, we'll be caught outdated, we'll be caught vulnerable very, very quickly. And we don't need to know the answers. But what we do need to know is what questions to ask. So off the back of that, what questions do you have? Because if we're not asking the questions, the lights are on, but there's no one home. It's part of our recruitment process at Frampel. We recruit somebody and they sit in the office and they don't ask any questions, Hokoyo, they're gone. Because it means something's not quite working. Do we have a dedicated R&D team the, sort, the short answer is no, we don't. But we make it the responsibility of every single one of our team members. It's part of their KRAs, their key, their, yes, their, their key result areas or their KPIs to ensure they contribute creative ideas termly. Each of them, 45 members of the team at Frampol, every single person is expected to contribute creativity, creatively to our strategic direction. If they don't, their termly bonus is in jeopardy. <laughs> and, and, and you know, Ken, why is it in jeopardy? Because if they don't, we are dead. It's no, it's no, it's no laughing matter in terms of not being creative. And then when they're, when they're faced with problems, I do not expect them to come to me and say, ah, oh, Neil, we have a problem. Yeah, yeah, come to me with the problem, but what is the solution and what is your research on AI tools like Relax AI telling you? Don't come and just regurgitate the problem like a... Uh, Ameno. They, 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 they have to come with having done the research, then present the problem. Because for sure, if the rate of change is exponential, our cheese is moving. Who's read the book, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson? That is worth writing down. It's about a two hour read. It is on the verge of life changing. It's a life changing book. Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson. And for leaders in your organization, you are surrounded by people who adapt to you, who predict change before it happens, and those who deny change, and the full spectrum in between. If you don't have a grasp of that, you will think that the person who's not responding to change is lazy, is idle, is useless. Or, if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you deny that change is happening, you will think the person coming to tell you that, boss, our cheese is moving is crazy and is annoying. It's a critical read. And if our rate of change is exponential, every single member of the team, every single one of those 45 people at Frampol needs to contribute creatively, ask curious questions as to where we're going strategically. Many an organization has died from not responding to change. Kodak, List them. You're better than me. Nokia. Huh? Nokia. Nokia. Kodak. Blackberry. And you know, they died at a time when things were changing once every two or three years. 
Now things are changing monthly. They're in trouble. And it's not, it's not, a, it's not a good thing for anybody in any position of influence in a company to say we've always done it like this. Or I saw six months ago that this technology did not work. Hokoyo, your competitor who is younger, who is not stuck in his ways, is adopting that technology and putting you out of business.